<clears throat> hey guys, I want to talk about another verse here, and uh, seem to be on kind of a roll doing this tonight. I'm just continuing listening to Robert Breaker's question and answer, and just checking out some verses that he's mentioning, and um, digging into some <clears throat> Hostess cupcake ice cream that I'm trying for the first time. <laughs> it's really good, but uh, they've got a Twinkie ice cream that I want to try too. This is pretty good. Don't know what to say about it. It's really chocolatey. Doesn't really necessarily remind me of the cupcakes, but it's some good chocolatey ice cream. Uh, anyway, I'm talking about Romans chapter 10, verse 4. And I'll look at it in the East Sword, make sure I get the King James reading of it. I think that basically, I'm listening to Robert Breaker and and he teaches that in the Old Testament, people were saved by works. In the New Testament, or after Christ died, that people are saved by uh, grace, you know, or by yeah, grace through faith. And uh, that's absolutely wrong. Nobody was ever saved by works. That's very, very bad teaching. And, and he doesn't even believe even in the New Testament that people are saved by grace through faith. He believes that there's all kinds of different ways to get saved in different time periods and all this. It's nonsense. But he's reading this Romans chapter 10, verse 4. It says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And I think that what he's trying to say is that this verse teaches that there's like a contrast between the Old Testament where he believes that people were saved by work and... and and after Christ, in some ways, that people are saved by grace through faith. Because he doesn't even, like I said, he doesn't teach that. He teaches bizarre stuff. He teaches that in Acts, people were saved by being baptized and stuff like that. And that, you know, in the tribulation, people will be saved by works and all this stuff, whatever else. Who knows? Uh, so it says, for Christ is the end of the law. And so he's saying that in the Old Testament, people were saved by the law. But when Christ came, it was the end of the law. It was done away with. And so now they're not saved by the law. Now they're saved by faith for those who believe in Christ. And uh, so he's wrong about the whole you know, Old Testament being saved uh, by uh, works. And, and uh, I think that he's basically kind of wrong about this first. He's got it twisted a bit, and I, I was looking at Albert Barnes' commentary again. This is interesting. I think, you know, I kind of learned from reading this, and so I hope you do too, but let's look at the end of the law. Christ is the end of the law. The word translated end means what completes a thing or what renders it perfect. Also, the boundary issue or termination of anything, and Breaker is basically saying it's a termination. He's saying that Christ was the end of the law, that, you know, he brought an end to, he terminated the law. Nobody's no longer saved by the law. And um, as the end of life, the end of life is termination of life, right? Uh, result of prophecy, etc. Uh, he uses some different verses, John 13, 1, Luke 22, 37. It also means, it also means, the design or object which is had in view, or the principal purpose for which it was undertaken. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5 says the end of the commandment is charity. The main design or purpose of the command is to produce love. First Peter 1 Peter 1.9, the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The main design or purpose of faith is to secure salvation. So the main design or purpose of Romans 14, 9, to this end, Christ both died, etc. For this design or purpose, this is doubtless the meaning here. This is the meaning in Romans chapter 10, verse 4, that the word end there means the design or purpose of. Okay, so for Christ is the design or purpose of the law. The main design or object which the perfect obedience of the law would accomplish is accomplished by faith in Christ. 
that is, perfect obedience to the law would accomplish justification before God. Okay, that's absolutely impossible for any of us uh, who are human. We have a sinless nature, uh, and and so if, if we could accomplish you know perfect obedience to the law, uh, we'd be secure in His favor and eternal life. The same end is now accomplished by faith in Christ. The great design of both is the same, and the same great and end. The same great end is finally gained. This was the subject of discussion between the Apostle and the Jews, and this is all that is necessary to understand in this case. Some have supposed that the word end refers to the ceremonial law, that Christ fulfilled it and brought it to an end. Others, that he perfectly fulfilled the moral law, and others, that the law in the end leads us to Christ, or that his design is to point us to him. All this is true but not the truth taught in this passage. That is simple and plain, that by faith in Christ, the same end is accomplished in regard to our justification. That would be by perfect obedience to the moral law. So, in this instance, Romans chapter 10, verse 4, I believe, I agree with this, that for Christ is the purpose or design of the law. Okay? Uh, so, Believing in him is the same as, uh, you know, we gain the same benefits as if we perfectly obeyed the law. These, yeah, so, and uh, Robert Breaker and other people look at this as for Christ is the termination of the law. And, uh, but the main thing that Robert Breaker is obviously wrong about is that people were saved by works in the Old Testament. You know, we can throw that out. So there's a little bit slight uh, difference of interpretation here, but uh, I believe that this is the correct interpretation of Albert Barnes, for Christ is the the purpose, the design of the law, believing in him, okay, uh, as he was able to perfectly fulfill the law too. So thanks, think about that, God bless.